Major Tool is a, a really large job shop. Primarily we're doing large fabrication and machine components, assembly and testing in aerospace, defense, power generation, oil and gas, and, and nuclear are the markets that we do most yep. of our work in. So folks, we are here in Indianapolis at Major Tool and Machine with Mike. Mike Griffith. And you are the? President. So what is, what is Major? Well, Major Tool is a, a really large job shop, contract manufacturer. <laughs> so, job shop? Really? Yeah. So uh, roughly 400 employees. Okay. And uh, primarily we're doing large fabrication and machine components, assembly and testing. Uh, and, and primarily in aerospace, defense, power generation, oil and gas, and, and nuclear are the markets that we do most yep. of our work in. Amazing. But you know, we, we've seen a lot of shops, we hear a lot of people say, oh, defense or oh, aerospace. I mean, this is some of the parts that we've seen, you know, even if you can't say what they are, you can see the kind of shape of them, and you yeah. know, those are things that, that go up in the air or make things happen in the world. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, big parts. Uh, I like to say that uh, we're constrained by what we can get out the door and okay. ship over the road. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. So, so that's that's really our limitations. Okay. So, yeah, which is incredible too. I mean, look at this machine. I mean, this is sixty some feet of travel on a single five-axis machine. That's yeah, it's one of probably four or five machines that big. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> 1946 is when okay. Major Tool was started. Yeah. So getting ready to celebrate 75 years in another it's amazing. year. Amazing. Yeah. It's incredible. When we were poking around your website, we saw that you guys have done some awards for folks that have been here 50 years. Two, That's, yeah, two employees that have been uh, with us for 50 years, and uh, each of them received the Cadillac as their 50-year <laughs> service award. It's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. Well, we're really excited to walk around here, so thanks for, thanks for having us out today. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Well, this is going to be a major awesome tour. And what we're looking at right now is our newest machine. It's a Parpus 20.4 XS machine, high-speed gantry. It is a 20-meter machine by 4.5 by 1.5 meters capable of 27,000 RPM spindle. It is interchangeable spindles running off HSK 163. So I met Steve, the proprietor of this place, yes. on, the, on the NTMA trip in Germany uh, just this past year. And this was the machine I believe they were doing a huge amount of just foundation work, site work. I mean, what you, to get ready for this sort of a machine takes a huge amount of work. Oh, just the foundation itself was a continuous support of 50 dump trucks. So oh it's just the foundation by itself was months and months of effort. Right really? now you're looking at it, it's only half of the machine. There's a wall that actually is installed in the middle of the machine. We have multiple parts and fixturing that we have on each side. So it allows us to work on one part while setting up and um, inspecting a part on the other side of the machine. But what we're looking at there is the five axis head and spindle. Yes. Okay. Yes. Can we walk in? Yep, Whoops. absolutely. <laughs> I love it when you can walk in a machine and these are just fixture bases that you use for setups? Yeah, so these are our risers. We're cur currently in the process of setting up uh, for one of our tests. If you look at the walls, the walls are actually made out of stainless because the entire machine is air conditioned and insulated. Oh my gosh. So wow. the temperature on the interior can be maintained within a couple of degrees, which on this size of parts is absolutely critical. Yeah. Is there a, like a stated accuracy spec within the work envelope that you look for in this? Um, we are still kind of in the early phases of getting it running, and so we're working to establish that. But over the entire scope of the machine, I mean, positioning accuracy is within a couple thousand. We're looking to be running parts on it in the net probably next two to three weeks. Oh, wow. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So one of the things right there, it does have an um, integrated rotary table. So yeah, I was wondering if that that's table a, can go, there yeah. a C-axis? So they can be stood up or vertically or horizontally. Look at those rails. We need to. Uh, that's incredible. Look at how that's cutting though. I mean, that's it's running a swarf along that. Yeah, yeah that's about a 10 push. degree. Yeah. Can you hog with this sort of a machine, or is it just a detail finishing machine? So there's three spindle cartridges. Um, you've got a 7,000, a 15,000, and a 27,000. And so with the lower RPMs, you get a higher torque sure. rating. Um, and so that's where lower RPMs and SEHSK 100 as well, yeah. where you can really use for some heavier cuts. But I think, of a, I think of a huge machine like this, and I think of how that Z column may be extended all the way down. I mean, can you take a three or four inch 
shell mill and rip through material? Um, so one of the one of the interesting things about this machine is there's actually a, a stabilizing bar in the front, oh. and so not only do you have you know your multiple points of contact on the cross rail itself, there's actually a third bar in the front that's adding stability from the front. So interesting. And when you say it does a can change out the spindle, is that literally changing it? Where, where's the brake line? What what changes out? Uh, so if you look down here, um, literally it's this face and below. Interesting. Where that all comes out. And it's a fully automated spindle cartridge change. Where's the tool changer? We gotta walk around the other side. <laughs> <laughs> and so just so we see, folks, this is half, literally half the machine. That wall separates the other half, which is unbelievable. When you run big machines, you need big dead blows. <laughs> So this tool changer right here. You can load in both HSK 163 and the total tool capacity is 120 tools. It shuttles them in. Oh, that's cool, because it kind of holds four so it can preload and so Yeah, forth. so you can preload one of each size. Got it. And unload that. Yeah, yeah. Looks like you guys are a big fan of heat shrink. We are. Uh, have the hammer system. Yeah. Um, and we use that pretty much throughout the entire facility. See over here, there's no roof on it. So the roof on both sides is actually servo operated. Okay. And so it's just, just an M code, right? That's <laughs> basically just an M code. <laughs> Look at the engagement. That's unbelievable. All quick change that are all quick disconnect connections in. Wow. Yeah, so, so it's, no... it's an integrated direct drive motor system then yep. inside of that. Yep. Wow. All electro spindles. Incredible. I've never seen anything like that. That's a first for us too. So I mean a spindle change on any other machine of this type where we can do spindle changes, it's anywhere from a half hour to an hour process. Yeah. Right, right here it's like five minutes. Right. What? <laughs> Just, you're not even taking up a fraction of the work envelope. And a full blown overhead bridge crane system, which requisite for this. Amazing. It does have through tool coolant, flood coolant, misting, but even the, uh, the coolant system on it is chilled. Yeah. So just Same from temp stabilization, just everything oh. identical control just on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. You know, it's always hard to convey scale on, on you know, video and YouTube, but we're yes. in a massive building with a, I would guess, 30 or 40 foot clear height. Yep, and, about 40. And it, I mean, it's huge. And then you look over and there is a giant pit there. So I'm going to guess that's a new yep. machine. Current, new, new installation. Um, I'm just adding capacity. We're dealing with the foundation requirements and the machining requirements. Acquiring a new machine is a year long process, if not longer. Do you know how far down the foundation goes? Uh, seven and a half feet at its deepest, but it's not throughout. Of concrete, though. Yeah, <laughs> concrete rebar. It's not going anywhere. Take a look. So where are we now? We're with Jim? Yes, yes. And We're, you are? I'm the machinist training coordinator. Okay. New employees or even? Both. Um, we like to have a certain level okay. of ability that a student could possibly get in a two-year uh, career center uh -huh. high school environment if they're exceptional. Yep. Or maybe a certain limited amount of experience in mm -hmm. the, you know, in another shop. Yep. But definitely not ready for our level of machining at major. Yeah. And so my goal is to, over the course of six months, bring them up to that level. And then, even then, they're ready for an entry-level spot mm -hmm. if everything works out right. So they're here full time as an employee for as six months employee. training, though. Yeah, they have wow. all the benefits of a full time employee. Yeah. They're with me four hours a day, and then they're out on the shop floor doing what we call shop rotations, mm -hmm. where they get to shadow like in quality deburr maintenance, 
in other areas that aren't directly machining, but they, sure. you know, it would help them to have that. Sure. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting, I, uh, I've seen a lot of these Miltat machines, you don't normally see them with a the Siemens control though. Well, we specifically brought them in with Siemens because our shop is on the custom side, probably about 80% Siemens on, all, on our controls. And you know, we've tried over the last 10 years or have been working towards a goal of you know, real standardization of controls. as far as the controls, yeah. yeah. So I've got those three and then got a larger machine in the back that also has the Siemens 840. You, you mind showing us? Sure. That a, that's a, yeah. a little HBM? Originally, it was a Cincinnati Millicron 10HC. Uh, it's got 60 inches of X travel. And you know, I've only been here about an hour and that's all of a sudden small to me. Oh, small. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it sure is. And um, 30 inches of Z. And five, six years ago, we upgraded this machine and removed the original Cincinnati control and uh, retrofitted it to the Siemens. Uh -huh. And at the same time, we upgraded the spindle to 20 horse. Oh, wow. So it's a 20 HC now. <laughs> okay, got it, and, got it. It's technically funny. speaking. Yeah. Um, and uh, I also have an integrated uh, Sudacoma rotary table. It's not in my lab right now. They're actually using it on the shop floor because I'm in a spot where I don't really need it right now. Uh, but it's a fully programmable, becomes a four-axis machine. Sure, sure. So, and, and this is a traditional uh, boring mill where you've got a spindle that'll actually push out for your... No, it does not have a quill. Oh, it doesn't? Um, Interesting. No, that entire vertical column moves for Z. Oh, I see. Yes, yeah, so you've got some yeah, pretty beefy the box right ways there. here. Box yeah, ways, sure. yeah. Got it would it. be nice if it had the quill, but it, it's, it's never had. Got it. <coughs> and it's got a proper tool changer. Yeah, right. Pull, pull, pull yep. tool changer. Wow. Yep, tool changer. It's a pretty cool machine. And then it also has some um, tool probing. Oh, really? shaw tool probing. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Which we also have on our on our mill taps. And then it also has Renishaw part probing as well. Yeah. How do you like the uh, mill taps? Oh, we love them. They are wickedly fast. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're great for training. I mean, I mean, they, thread milling. Yeah, mean, interesting. I actually have a uh, a thread mill class that I put oh, together. Really? Yeah. And so on thread milling, are, are you guys programming that stuff with with uh, cycles or cam or? If it's a program that's generated by our CAD CAM department, it is just literally point to point yeah. machining. But the Siemens control has a conversational side with a thread milling cycle Got it. that is incredibly user friendly. And so that's one of my main goals in the thread milling class is to introduce the guys to that cycle who may have not used it. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're running programs that are always posted for them, then there's, there's no programming component for them. But uh, if they've only got like one hole to thread yeah. mill and it's a fixture type situation, it really doesn't justify having a CAD CAM guy. Right. And so that's where I really want them to understand that Siemens thread mill cycle and be able to apply it on the floor. Sure. And, cool. And I love it. Oh, look at that. What's the uh, fixture part there? Yeah, this is a fixture that we use for uh, our, our VLS program. And is a certain, it's called a tie rod block detail that we run on it. Okay. And it's designed to run six parts at once and probably four different part numbers. That's why all the different yeah. holes and stuff. Interesting. Oh, bigger tool changes on this one then. Yeah, huh? this is this one's a little bit of a different animal than the other two. Yeah. Oh, um, wow. This is a nicer machine. It's got the 25 tool carousel instead uh -huh. of the 15. It's got the chip conveyor where the other two does not. Yep. So how many yep. folks are you running through your training program? We typically try six is pretty much our maximum okay. number. Um, well, I've had a class of five. I've had a class of four. So it's a lot of it just depends on the availability of students. Yeah. You know who we can get to fill a class at any given time. Yeah. It's pretty small though. Right. That's nice. Yeah. We want to keep it small. That way, each individual can spend as much hands-on time as possible. Mm -hmm. So let's make some chips. Right. Looks like you've got almost like a high-feed mill or a is it's, it Sandvik. Uh, it's an inserted bonos. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Cool. That's awesome. These are 30 tapers. Pardon? These yeah, are 30 taper machines. It's a hell of a face mill engaged uh, extension on that yeah, for a 30 I taper. Like that. <laughs> cool. This is absolutely amazing. So we are with 
Brandon Lee, Brandon. senior manager. Yep. This is a large gantry mill. Uh, right now we're prepping steel plates for a large fabrication. Okay. So we utilize this machine based on horsepower availability as well as travel that allow us to get a plate of this size machine in one setup. Do you know the, do you know the XY on this machine? Uh, we have over 700 inches of X travel okay. um, and about half that in, in Y. Wow. Oh, interesting. So X, it, X is X running. are long axis on this. Weird. Machine. Yeah, yeah, I would think of it as the opposite. Okay. Yeah. That's and what's this? Is an HSK 100? This is actually a Cat 50 spindle. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. We're running this cut right now at about 380 RPM. Wow. Yeah, 50 inches a minute. Mm -hmm. The machine, I mean, the machine isn't complaining at all. Not at all. Oh, no, wow. we're not really even drawing much of a load on the spindle. Really? Meter. Yeah. Oh, my God. So you'll buy a piece of plate like this, but obviously it's not flat or within tolerance to spec, and so all you're really doing here is prepping it. Correct. From an engineering standpoint, we just allow for enough material based on mill run tolerances, yeah. and then we'll bring these plates into, uh, we'll cut all four sides of the perimeter and both faces to prep them for the fabrication. So you'll, you're doing the first face now, and then you'll, actually it looks like you've already done part of the perimeter, and then you're going to flip it? Correct. We'll bring this side in uh, to flatness. We'll flip the part over offline, yeah. uh, and then bring in the thickness and parallelism. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. We've had this machine installed for about four years. Full five axis. This machine actually has interchangeable heads. Oh, it does. So right now we're running just a straight vertical head, but we have a five axis contouring head as well, and a 90 degree head. Okay. Uh, and then we can also turn with this machine. Really? So we've got an integrated rotary table behind us here, oh, that, and okay. we have a lathe head yep. with Capto tooling. Uh, so this machine is a lathe as well. So it's Cat 50 now, but it'll switch to a C6 or something? Correct. C8 and C8? C6. Oh yep. my God. Where are the heads? The heads are back in our in this fabricated box behind oh, us. Okay. So it has an automatic head changer. Oh, it's automatic. Yep. Oh my yep. God. That's incredible. So uh, what is this? This plate's got to be 15 feet long or something right now. Yes. What would you, what's a reasonable parallelism spec on, on, on this? Process? The tolerance on this is 20 thou. Okay. So it's fairly, fairly open tolerance for a plate of this size. But again, there, this is essentially a weld prep off yeah. for the fabrication. Got it. Yeah. That's cool. But we do parts um, that are roughly 14 uh, foot square and we're holding under 10 thou flatness and parallelism on those flatness as well. Yep. Wow. Wow. So this is that RS25 nozzle. He's doing an ID turn cut, so what we were talking about, that, yeah. you can get up in there and look down if you want. Oh my God. 
We're here at the Giddings and Lewis with Joe Fox. And what do we have here? This is our VTC 2500. This machine is a little bit unique in that it has a right angle head that has a capability to swivel about the Z axis. It gives us a virtual Y axis okay. in a sense when we're right angle milling. But you don't actually have movement of the gantry in and out, but exactly. you just get it through the pivot. Exactly. Point. So it's yes. going to use the rotation of the CY head, yeah. the rotation of the table, and the X and the Z to use four axis to really simulate three axis. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, sure. So is that something that happens in the CAM software or in the post processor? You know? That happens actually in the control. Whenever we activate the software, that turns us into an XY. <laughs> Look at that. So we're backed off a little bit, so it's not going to throw chips at us. Sure. So if you look on the screen, we're, we've got four axis moving um, to simulate yeah. the three. Yeah, so the C is your table, and then that's your head. Yeah. Got it. Exactly. So it can do holes, tapping, thread milling, it anything. Can sink in off center. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a table. It's got a huge amount of inertia to it. To think about it being able to control that right, and right, get a, a yeah. finish. We do a lot of thread milling just out of our vertical heads with them. Yeah. It can, that table has no trouble keeping up. And no backlash, no, no tool. You don't see it in the tool light no. with chipping or anything? No. We got parts. We thread mill 600 plus holes per part uh, on the VTC. And um, it, it's pretty much quicker than tapping. You know what I mean? <laughs> 20 seconds a hole. Really? Yeah. It's incredible. So where does it, how does this do a tool change? Can um, it with so, a 90? So yeah, it's okay. got a, it's got a drawer right there that'll slide open oh, yeah? this way. Okay. And then it can go in there and change the tools. And that's HSK? No, this is all Capto C8. Oh, C8. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, everything is Capto on it. The turning, the milling, yeah, everything. Right. Yeah, got it. Now can you, could you throw a turning tool in that and it'll hold it, positionally hold it and do a turn? Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Is this a common setup to have a tombstone in a, a relatively no, small not, part? No, normally we normally it's we're doing we're doing work on actual parts. Yeah. You know what I mean? We do use this tombstone setup. Uh, we we have like a we have full probing capability with the with that head. Uh -huh. So we we run that circle diamond square on the other side mm -hmm. with a probing routine, and we check the dimensional accuracy of the machine versus what that checks at our CMM machine. Yep. And we compare those two to make sure that our CY head's performing 100%. And so then you, you comp it, or is there a lot, like is it a tram issue, a mechanical tram? There, no, that, the, it would be electronic tram. Okay. Yeah, for, for the head itself. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. More big parts, more double column bridge mills. Drilling on a casting at an angle. Correct. Yep. That's incredible. Those angle holes in on yeah. That With a, a solid carbide drill? Yeah. Holy. Mill. Oh, you're interpolating it. Okay. And is this on, this is on a C axis as well? Correct. Rotate? C axis yeah. rotary. Look at that. And with the head, you still get spindle load feedback yep. at the control, so you can see what's kind of, I mean, like, I'm used to being able to hear and see, and you can't really, you don't really get that here, right?
five kilowatt laser? Yeah, five kilowatt laser. So it's actually full five axis with an integrated rotary table. Yeah, it's unusual. So this is the table that moves in and out like yep. this. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah so look you at that. In from the outside, the shuttle's inside. The yeah, shuttle. I've never seen one like that. And there's your, there's your head right there. Yep. Wow. Oh, it's a great, it's a genius design. Oh, yeah. It, it, Incredible, Tim. Rolling what looks to be maybe one inch plate. <laughs> Look at the size of the cylinder. Look at the teeth on the blade. The teeth alone are almost as big as our bandsaw blade. Is that really a CMM? Yeah. On a rail system into the center plate table. Look at the size of that. This is all inspection. It's, yeah, so this is our main metrology lab. We do do inspections outside of this area, but um, this is the main area with the largest CMM capability. It is climate controlled. Yeah. We do all our uh, gauge management. So you see gauge calibration. Yeah, I was going to say what the drawers are. Okay. It's all handled here internally. So do you do uh, your own calibration throughout the plant, or do you bring somebody else in to do that? Uh, I mean, it depends on the gauge. Okay. Um, but we do have a certain level of capability, especially with the smaller gauges, to do all that calibration and management ourselves. Got it. And that's, I don't know that much about this process, but it's come up a number of times with whatever AS9100 or ISO, mm -hmm. that's acceptable to do and it's part of your quality plan is your own calibration, mm -hmm. so long as you have the requisite tools right. and skills or certifications. Yeah, um, certifications, necessary operating procedures. Mm -hmm. um, you have documentation. Documentation, yeah, there has to be the history established and we have our own uh, programs that help manage that okay. for us. Got it. Cool. Oh, but then more CMMs along the wall. Yes. Yeah, so we do have a number of broken arm uh, CMMs. Broken arm, that's what you call a roamer? Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. So we do have two of those, along with those, another Zeiss, small Dia Gamma. Yep. We actually, right there in the corner too, um, recently acquired blue light, white light scanning. I don't know what that is. Basically, it's being able to project the blue or white light onto a surface, and it's actually able to create a point cloud um, that allows you to essentially reverse engineer a 3D model sure, of the existing sure. surface. Wow. In terms of being able to use that for Okay, yeah, so three, almost a 3D scanning. Essentially, yeah. yeah. Wow. So you have a head, and you're able to position it. That's what this system here is, mm -hmm. unassembled or yeah. got it. Cool. All the tools get ran through our pre-setting before they ever go out to the machine. Do you guys still have a stock library though? So if somebody, if a new job comes in, are yep. you, you're trying to, you're trying to work with an existing tool library because why buy if you don't need to? Or yes, um, depending on the application. Uh, but we also use TDM systems to do our tool database management. Got it. So if we can pull from something that's existing, sure. then that makes sense. When your job is done, will you still leave stuff set up offline, or do you break everything down? I mean, it, 
It depends how we need the, there's a need for the tool holders or the type of tool. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of places where we have redundant tools across the campus, and so yep. we just move tools, redistribute them if needed. But based on the tag system, you'll know what is where at any point in time from that TDM system or your ERP? Yes. Okay, that's awesome. Yep. And you said the new uh, Parpus is RFID? Yes. Yes. Yep. Moving, definitely moving forward with implementing RFID across um, the new machines that we acquire. Part of that hot cast manifold. That's where the Mitsubishi is called. We call it 40 foot Mitsubishi because the bed that it rides on down in that pit's 40 foot. Bronze. Oh my god. That's a great uh, operator cab position. Oh yeah. On that machine. So yeah. it runs 40 foot in X. Yep. <laughs> the box weighs on that machine. It's beautiful. Does it have a uh, power changer? Is that what that is? No, it's just rotary axis. Oh, a rotor. So oh you my got, God. You got a bed slide for it to approach and then rotary. So it stays here. So the machine travels down here and does work on this rotary. Yep. And then you got the fixed bed right here that it comes over. So you got two different workspaces. It's incredible. Oh my God. Folks, I want to give a big shout out and a thank you to Major Tool for letting us come, letting us film and sharing their story. We need multi-generational experts in manufacturing like this to make our world work. The parts that we got to see in this video are parts that go way down in the ocean and way up in the sky, and they are absolutely critical to the engineering that we have had through all sorts of different aviation power generation programs. For me, it makes me think back to Project Egress when we worked on the Apollo parts, and you can't just decide you want to make something. You have to have deep-seated engineering talent, and Major Tool was probably one of the best examples of a company under one roof that has huge machines, fabrication, welding, you know, just absolutely uh, amazing. It took a lot of effort and work to allow us to come in and film. So again, thank you to the team at Major. As always, folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.